How you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm good in yourself. Doing great. Doing great. Starting to get a little chilly here in the southeast. I'm I'm in the ATL here in oh, Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're starting to get a little bit more of winter here. It was uh, quite a doozy of a summer. I'll tell you, it was really hot, <laughs> as yeah. it always is in a hot, hot Atlanta. But uh, yeah, we're doing okay. I'm not used to this cold, though. Yeah, this cold has been hitting us for at least four weeks now, at least a month now. So we over in North New Jersey, and it's like crazy <laughs> over here. We used to it though. Yeah, yeah. So you're up in uh, is it Newark area? Newark, yes. Newark, New yeah. Jersey. I got a daughter. She's living in Elizabeth. Oh yeah, next door. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Likes it. Yeah, like she grew up here in the south, but she she couldn't stand the heat, so she's been up uh, in that area for a while now. That's definitely a difference. <laughs> oh yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, when the snow comes, it's like I don't want. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, so. Had tons of snow up there. Okay, okay. So you don't want no parts of it no more. No, no. <laughs> don't miss that. Yeah, I got a bad back from shoveling that stuff for years. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I try to do all my vacations away from in, anywhere hot. Just anywhere hot. I love hot weather. I don't like the snow. But because I run the business here and everything, it just makes sense for me to stay here. But I'm definitely having thoughts about, uh, you know, expanding other places <laughs> <laughs> yeah miami doesn't look too bad right now i mean you just deal with the hurricanes every now and then right 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 my wife is from texas well she's from baton rouge so oh she's been trying to get me to uh move down to texas because her mom and them is in texas and it's like i went down there to visit a couple of times and you used to get off the plane and the heat hits you like i'm like whoa what is that <laughs> <laughs> that's so, funny so, in dallas yeah, oh the, the, it's suffocating, you know, and it's a, and then they they're used to it. So when yeah, you do, you do. It, yeah, if you got used to it, I'm like, this is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, brutal summers there, yeah, definitely. But Texas, it's uh very different. It's almost its own country over there. For real, like it, it smacked me. I was like, oh no, this this is a little too much. And usually I'm I'm the outside person. I like to go outside and I was like, no, nah, let's stay inside. <laughs> <laughs> stay under the air. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get any easier as, as we start putting on the the years. Uh it just gets a little harder with with the weather and things like that. So that's why, you know, so many go down to Florida. But uh yeah, yeah. that's that's a whole different story there. Yeah, man. How are you though? Good, good. Hanging in there. I've been doing this podcast. Uh, I think we're now going into our third year. So I nice. talk to folks like you trying to get more on the radar. Okay. And, uh, you know, I see all these interesting projects everybody's been doing. You know, it kind of came out of the whole pandemic because there were a whole bunch of people who were um, basically, you know, stuck inside all the time. Right. So it was really, really tough for them to get out and perform. So they were doing a lot of these things online. So I was trying to get the word out about a lot of, a lot of great talent out there. It's just amazing. Yes. 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 I mean, it, it put a, a stifle, stifle on a lot of things that we were doing with the organization. Um, I, I didn't close my doors though. Like, you know, I, we worked, we worked through the whole COVID situation um, and, and just really became a, a staple in the community even more because we were able to survive different ways online like in, in that manner as well. So it actually grew us because we were used to having in-person stuff and now we're in-person and do online stuff. So it's like, wow, some some greatness came out of that as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So what is the name of your center and how long has that been, uh, been going? The Hub Arts and Trauma Center. Hub with two Bs. It stands for Help Us Become Better. Um, and we've been doing this work for 16 years, nearly 17 years now. Cool. Yeah, so the beautiful part about it is the center is in the middle of, it's in the central ward of, of North New Jersey. But, you know, it, we built it in a place that's notoriously known for negativity, um, Prince Street. And we took a dilapidated space and 9,000 square feet and, and turned it into a haven for the young people to grow up in. And literally, like I just had a young a young um, person the other day come that get ready to graduate college and stuff. And I had him since he was a little kid, right? So it's just beautiful watching them grow and, you know, out of this become successful and then want to come back and, 
you know, get what they, you know, give to what they've gotten from us. And that, that's just the beautiful success stories for me, you know, knowing that, you know, I grew up in the boys and girls clubs and um, today not taking anything away from them, but it's not enough today, right? Yeah. You know, you know, it's to me, it's a little over commercialized and not really focusing on the problem that our young people are facing. And that's what, what kind of really stemmed me to do this differently. Like I knew what I got from the Boys and Girls Club, but I also knew what I was missing as well. So I wanted to build a place with utilizing the arts, which saved my life. Music saved my life. So oh, totally. I really believe that if I didn't have the skills and talent to, to rhyme and stuff like that, and I was like a neighborhood celebrity with my friends and I hung around with all of the bad dudes. So I stayed out of trouble, but music kind of really kept me engaged and out of trouble, you yeah. know? So um, it really saved my life and I attributed it to that. And now I wanted to build this place where not only just the music, but the arts itself can help save other young people. And we've been doing it here in this space for the last 11 years. Cool. Cool. How do you get your funding? Do you get a lot of contributions? Are they all big and small? <laughs> The, 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 the funny part, we just had a conversation yesterday about that. We didn't get our real first real piece of funding until 2017. Mm. And we started in 2006. So it, it was rough. It yeah. was rough. But, you know, we had a lot of people that just really bought into the idea of what we were trying to do. You know, I'm, I'm very passionate. And, of course, I use the music business as a way to, you know, relationships and leveraging. Um, just because I was good at that and I knew how to attract people um, in that manner. So I was always uh, socially friendly to get people to, 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 to help out and volunteer. So we survived those years with no real funding. But then once we, you know, finally got some funding, it, it started happening even more after that. So we're, we're in a great place now. Um, from 2017 to now, we, we've um, got a lot of state funding city funding and um really able to keep the doors open now instead of coming out of my pocket <laughs> yeah yeah and that's that's just got to be so stressful to think you know money's the the biggest stress out of everything to try to keep it going so yeah, yeah it's got to be yeah. really tough i mean it's still it's still a fight um convincing um the narrative that you know like we can do this work like we you know, i'm part of a, a collection a collective with Brick City Peace Collective, right? And it's all about community-based violence intervention and and the uh, shared public safety, right? And how yeah. the community plays a part <clears throat> in the safety of our communities, right? And and this little black boy from Newark was in the White House last week, last Thursday, you know, meeting with them and they literally made a community-based violence intervention a line item in the president's budget, right? So. That to me says like we've been doing the hard work, we fought to to really change the narrative and fund us to understand the work that we do is very important. And now, you know, uh Joe Biden just uh President Joe Biden just allocated like five billion dollars across America for community based violence intervention. So that's huge. It's a huge win for us. And and now we can expect those dollars to be able to help save ourselves. Yeah, it's a whole community thing. It really is. Yeah. It's all, you know, everybody's got to be in on this. We've had these issues here in Atlanta, just mm -hmm. so much violence. Yeah. And really, really young kids were murdered right. on this one bridge uh, near where I work. And, wow. uh, you know, they got out last night and they were talking about doing things like this. You know, everybody's got to watch out for one another. And, right. you know, these community based things are so important. And, you know, it's the idle hands. It's got to be the idle hands that's just, uh, get people in trouble no absolutely and we we just got to do more educating and and for me the 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 idea of taking entertainment and using that as a tool the yeah. arts and using that as a tool to get them in a safe space right and then you know when they're in the safe space doing what they love you can then teach them right yeah. so our models is mm -hmm. entertain educate empower Right. So yeah. the entertainment part is all about the arts, utilizing that to draw them in. Once we have them, we can educate them. Right. We can give them the financial literacy, health and wellness, grooming and self-efficacy, mentorship, all of those things. Absolutely. But to me, the empowerment part has really become 
the thing to really um, create sustainability because we teach them to peel back the layers, right? And find out what's really, where the harm is really at, right? And, and from that, you can start a healing process, right? It, it's one thing to not even identify with trauma, right? And, and so many of us go through life not, not identifying, well, that's trauma. And sometimes you got to name it. You got to call it what it is so that you can face it, right? I teach the young people that the healing is in the womb, right? The, you, sometimes you got to go and face it head on just to be able to, to identify with it, accept it, and to be able to figure out ways to heal from it. But if you never face it, you can't heal from it, right? You can't even admit that that it exists. There's no way to heal from it because you're going to keep per- perpetuating this this uh, this way of uh, victimization, right? Yeah, and not really calling it that, right? You know, yeah. we all been victimized, and it's okay to not be okay. You just can't stay stuck there, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the thing, and teaching them coping skills on how to be resilient after it. We, we're we resilient people. We've survived a lot, right? But we got to tap into that. And we're so used to, you know, maladaptive ways and unfortunately it gets us in trouble and making bad decisions. We got to change that. Yeah, that's where it really needs to change. And yeah. doing that kind of an organization is, is so good for you. So growing up, uh, how was it growing up there? You were you're always in New Jersey? Yeah, no. New Jersey, born and raised. I mean, the Essex County area, but North was like home base. You know, I lived in Irvington, East Orange, and you know Montclair, all of those places. Yeah. But Newark has has been the the solid foundation for me, and it, it was rough. And you know, it was it was rough growing up. The temptations, you know, because you've seen the poverty, you've seen the the drug dealers, you've seen the gangs, you've seen all of those things. But like I said, music saved my life, right? I had a talent that, you know, kind of kept me focused on other things. And even though I was that social kid that was friends with everybody, my brothers was out there. Like (laughs) I'm the middle child and my brothers were, were, you know, uh, they were straddling the fence, you know, (laughs) you get lost in the shuffle that way being the middle kid. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And you know, I I just stayed focused on music. Right. There was the thing that allowed me to be able to talk about some of the issues that was going on, um, share it in funny ways and share it in the ways that ways that the people that didn't know exactly what was going on with me got to understand it in the way in my creative way. Right. So I really attribute music saving my life, you know. Yeah. Who did you uh, discover growing up? Who who was really (laughs) inspiring you? uh, I mean, you know. It, of course, I got to talk about the LL Cool J's yeah. and the Rock Rock Kim and I when those I'm guys a, were new, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of Tupac, right? So Tupac was like the total misunderstood, you know. Like you know, I I really understood Pac in a way that you know later on in his career, I think he really made some bad decisions. Um, but the reality of it is, is his music and the way that he thought and talked and it was a root revolutionary. Right. Like, yeah. so that pushed me and then loving uh, women. Right. And girls like LL Cool J was it like, like, oh, man, like, you know, like that. If I could <laughs> use my skill to attract women. Oh, man, that's that's dope. And, and the Rock Kim just <laughs> wordplay, man. So those kind of three kept me and guided me in my my artistry. <laughs> well, LL Cool J went on to. uh and that was a good path, definitely, yeah. compared to a lot of these other guys. So, yeah, it's, it, what a success story that is. And no, absolutely. at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and things like that, it was yeah, just, man. Uh, yeah, really good story there, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, it must have been rough. I'm mean, going through those schools. Did you find other people who were into the same kind of music you were into as you were going up through school up there? No, absolutely. Naughty by Nature, the the Lords of the Underground, the, the Red Mans, the Queen Latifahs, all of them. Like mm-hmm. the, the, that was that was my era of growing up and, and seeing them and battling and you know in the mm-hmm. different clubs and battle music and oh man, it was crazy. But you know to see their success go to the level that it did, it was like wow. You know, like you know, salute to them. You know, yeah. um, and and for me, it was just like loving watching them them grow and represent for our city and i'm really close with uh rasheem Pugh, 
Um, you got you probably know him better as uh, Kilo because yeah. the miseducation of Lauren Hill, yeah. right? Total so, classic. So it, yeah. it, it, he wrote and and produced a lot of that album, and and I'm really close with him. So just watching the success stories, it was like, wow, we could really make it out. So seeing those things allowed me to be able to you know talk to my young people today like it's possible, right? You know, just because we stuck in it, your situation does not have to dictate your destination. It can, but it doesn't have to, right? And and I'm I'm a a, a fine believer in change is possible. Oh, completely. Yeah. So getting into the music, uh, where did you start recording and and composing your own stuff? <laughs> oh man, House of Music. I'll never forget it, man. House that was cool in the gang studio up in West Orange. And um, Rashad Muhammad, man, like, you know, he was one of my mentors, but he was an engineer. And he's still doing work with Cool in the Gang today. That's wow. crazy, right? Like, you know, still making music, still touring and all that stuff. But I owe a lot to him because of him guiding me in, in through the music and Kasim Samad, Bad Bass. It was different studios that were really big in this Essex County area, but... I love the fact that those engineers and those owners of those studios were also mentors, right? So that changed the game. They weren't just about making their money. They were about teaching the game as well so you to understand the craft. So I think all of that made me who I am today. Yeah, yeah. and that's where it's it's important. Yeah, it, it totally finds you, uh, you know, it's, where did the uh, name come from as as you were forming your act? <laughs> Mr. Hub, yeah. exactly, because from the Hub Arts and Trauma Center, the young people start calling me Mr. Hub because everything that I do That's is it. about making sure that they're in a in a great space and understanding that they got a safe haven. And it's stuff, right? It, yeah. it, my my former name was misunderstood in, <laughs> in, in the music business, but because I, I've been doing this for 16 years, the kids called me Mr. Hub. But misunderstood was just because nobody understood how I would make these songs and I was a straight A student, but I hung around with all the bad dudes. So to look at me, you would think that I was out there, but I wasn't, right? So wow. the name came as misunderstood in high school. I was the uh, uh, what was the uh, homecoming king. I, I was I was wow. celebrity, right? So I was it. <laughs> and you know they just didn't understand that how I wasn't in trouble the way that all my friends were. So the name stuck with misunderstood. I changed it up when I started doing the organization and the kid called me Mr. Hub and it stuck. It was like, whoa, okay, wow, that's 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 dope. I wasn't even doing music for a minute. I stopped. Love hate wow. relationship with the music business, man. It was just like I couldn't grasp the idea of of these young people doing music and it wasn't feel good music, right? It wasn't, yeah. the energy wasn't there and people were killing each other. Like, it, it was like, what in the hell? And they're still doing it, right? But then I had to remember when we started doing music, um, everybody, you know, was beating us down about the music and not really understanding our creativity. And, you know, I had to give them a pass. Like, I right, I understand that it's different. Yeah. These young people, y'all gonna do things differently. And, and there's codes in their music and stuff like that. But when it becomes detriment to our people, I have a problem with that, right? And, and you know, I, I had that love-hate relationship with it for a minute, so I stopped doing yeah. it, right? And I focused on the, 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 um, the organization and building the organization out. And it really wasn't until, you know, a couple of years ago when, you know, some of the young people that we was doing music and stuff with, because I have a studio, radio station, videography, photography, all that set up in the, in the center. And... Some of the young kids were doing music and, yeah. you know, it leaked out somehow that I was an artist somehow. And some of the kids challenged me and stuff like that. And we got in the booth and it was like, oh, stop, Mr. Ho can really rap. It was like, I was like, yeah. So then it was like, wow, they love the music that I wrote. And I was like, wow. So you mean to tell me that y'all not, you know, you're not beat me down because I ain't talking about killing each other and stuff like that. And it was like a feel good. And that was a revitalization of, oh, wow, that's something that's missing right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, we're, we're the, the Rock Hims, the, the Biggies, the, the Jay Z, all of those are missing right here yeah. where it was sustenance in the, in the music. And I was like, all right, well, let me, let me, let me use this as a tool. 
I know I don't want to be an artist again, right? That's not yeah. what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is utilize my talent in a way that I can use it as a teaching tool for the young people that are listening to the music. So yeah. like a lot of times people say, well, you know, you're going to go on tour and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm going on tour teaching young people not to, not to throw their lives away. Right. And, yeah. and, and to, to understand victimization doesn't have to be the end all. Right. And right. they can survive their resiliency and I'm going to do it through music. So I create these visual masterpieces and this, this piece of art when I, I call it art, in the way of, of taking our feelings, our traumas, and putting it into song, right? Yeah, it's good to mix the two and mix the creativity yeah. and the social aspect together, and they're finding inspiration in that. Absolutely. Inspire. My mother used to always say, perceive it, uh, perceive it, believe it, and achieve it. I, I grew up with that, man, and it was like, you know, wow, okay, so, you know, got to make it, make it clear. You know, so how do you make it clear? How do you paint the picture so yeah. people understand it? And music has always been a universal language, you know? So if we could put it in a way that they understand it and see it in this form, then maybe it can translate into some positivity. And that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, yeah, totally. So the big thing out now is uh, you have a new single. Uh, yeah. What's the, or what's the origins of Grown Man? Shh. So it's, uh, you got some pretty interesting people that are not. Yeah, Grown Man is, man, it's, it's really about just owning up to your shit and understanding. Do you, can, can, can we curse? I don't, is it all right to curse? Yeah. <laughs> is, is it all right to curse? Yeah. Just making sure. Okay. So, so um, it was about oh, yeah. just owning up to your stuff, man, yeah. and, and making sure that. You know, we all made bad decisions. We've all made some mistakes in our life, but it doesn't have to determine your life, your, your end result. And and um, facing that, right, and pulling your pants up, being a, being pulling your pants up, and being a man that the community should expect you to be, right? We kings and queens, man, and and there our queens are looking for us to be kings. And I wanted to challenge some of the young kids that was in the program that had excelled at, you know, getting a job with us, being employed by us, right? I, the two young guys that's on the song with me, you know, they were out there. They were they were making some bad decisions. And, you know, they wanted to change their life around. We brought them in. And then once I heard that they was musically inclined, you know, we, we put them on a song. And I challenged them to create um, their verse around their struggles, what they had been through. And let's talk about that. And I love the way the song came together. And, it, you know, the did you happen to see the, vid, the video? Yeah, good, great video up there yes. on YouTube, on your YouTube thank channel. You. Thank you, thank you. So I, I was really trying to make sure that we let that translate in the visual masterpiece right there. So, like, that, that the trauma happens. It happens to all of us, right? But what do you do about it, right? And then I wanted to play on the community-based violence intervention and what we do at the hub. Mm. Th that song really depicts how people can make bad decisions, go through life, all that, but they can be resilient and how the hub helps them walk through it. Yeah. Was that all shot at the hub um, over how many days or was it just one yeah, day? We, we actually shot it in one day, but it's all yeah. around the hub. Yes. Yeah. It's a good yeah. promo. It's a yeah. good promo for Thank the center. You. Like, yeah, where is that? Yeah, that's cool. Right, right, right. And I was trying to be very strategic with that. <laughs> <laughs> so was that somebody like involved with the hub who directed that and edited it and got it all together? Yeah, well, they actually do, do some teaching and stuff for us. Um, but he has his own organization. But as we get more funding, I'm going to hire him to come in and do more teaching like that. But I have a lot of the young people now that are really interested in, in learning how to do it. So a lot of the new videos that we do and the promotions and all that stuff are being done by the young people. Yeah. Yeah. It really helps get the word out. You got to get on the socials and really distribute this thing and make, right. make, making more people aware, which could probably get you more funding. People. Absolutely. Are involved. That's, that's the plan, man. That's the plan. Um, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm part of this network. So I'm doing a lot of work in Baton Rouge and, and um, Orlando right now. So we're putting this tour together. That, that we can take the kids from Newark and Baton Rouge and Orlando and have them make songs and stuff together. And it's like a live for something tour that we're doing. Um, mm. And, you know, we're going to use that, right? you know, but 
of course we gotta have these outlets like yourself and thank you for having us but outlets like you guys that expand our network right expand our viewership so people really understand what we're trying to do here yeah that's important is it's getting the word out and it's hard because like just about everybody's got these computers everybody can right. get on tiktok and all this stuff so right hard to compete it's nice to you know get easy distribution that's for sure Especially right right want to get your music out there so uh are we able to see you on all the socials and then like spotify all your music that's all easily available through your site mm -hmm. Right. That hub life is, is the key. You know, everything is going through that hub life with two B's um, and the social media, all platforms are under that. And we're doing a lot more uh, marketing and promotion. I just hired a firm actually to do the promotions and stuff. That's how I got you. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so, you know, we're, we're taking the steps to really push us out there and utilizing relationships and leveraging those relationships and some more viewerships that will hopefully turn into more donors and 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 participate participants to help out cool and you have music in uh this upcoming or is it out now this bruce uh, willis movie it's getting ready to drop in a new year i'm, I'm so excited because this is bruce willis last movie and and that was the song live for something as well it made it to the soundtrack and i'm so waiting anticipating what happens with that because Again, it's a teaching tool. Live for Something is another song that we wrote about our, our young people making bad decisions and, and black on black crime, right? You know, it's like, yeah. it's easy to talk about what somebody else doing to us, but what about us? What, what are we doing to each other? So um, live for something, you know, we'll die for anything. How about you live for something? So um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about that, man. And, you know, Hopefully the Bruce Willis movie movie will, you know, kind of catapult that into another space where we can be able to take it on a larger level. Yeah. Called Die Like Lovers. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so hard to tell where things will be opening up or whether it'll be streaming or how that's going to go these days. It's really right. there, because it's the last, his last movie, they, they've had to make some changes and some edits and, you know, and they're, they're getting ready for this big push on it. So. I'm excited about that. Yeah, live for something. We'll be looking for that. Uh, I'm sure fits it well, and that, that's exciting to be part of that soundtrack. That that's got to be. When did you When did you hear about that? That it was going to make the soundtrack? Oh man, this was this was the beginning of um, this was the beginning of last year. Um, I want to say, no, nah, it was actually the middle of the year. It was actually the middle of the year, around May or June. And and we got the the um, email like they was interested in the song and they was listening to it and mm. actually from my organization we got two songs on it right you know uh, yeah. my other artist Penelope and um, my Penelope, song and yeah. I was like yeah I'm like oh snap like so I got really <laughs> excited like two songs making it on this like you know that's unheard of so you know from a little organization like us and we got two songs on Bruce Willis last movie like it's crazy. Very cool. That's a that's a great accomplishment. You got a lot of uh trophies, awards back there. That's oh. all yours or part of your family's. Well, it's the organization because I'm in in the center right now. Yeah, the center. What we used to do is um uh, the <laughs> Healthy Olympics for many years. You know, North is, uh, consists of five different wards, and we used to have all of the wards compete with you know the childhood games like basketball, kickball, uh, volleyball, uh, um. Uh, scooter racing and all that and the wars compete against each other and you see the central world where i'm from we won it a couple of times so like you know different wars won but i kept them all here so that we can really celebrate the central ward and the wards and just really being in the community and doing this work we're keeping kids out of trouble but doing something positive Nice, nice. Yeah, a lot of a lot of accolades there. That's good stuff. So, uh, any of the ones you became a certified advocate, mental health advocate. Was that a special certificate you had to work for? Yeah, I'm a victim. Um, I'm a victim advocate. I mean, because of some of the traumas that I've been through in my life, like I wanted to do more to help people not be in the same situation that I've been, and to fight for them. Because I I know what I always wanted. You know, even though. I was a neighborhood celebrity, even though I um, um, was a straight A student. I had I had dealt with some trauma in my life that 
I wanted somebody to fight for me for because I didn't know, I, again, not, not identifying with trauma. Not knowing that that was trauma, I wanted somebody to fight for me. And it just didn't happen. And, you know, I grew up making some really bad decisions because I didn't know that I was dealing with trauma. And so as I was doing this work, unfortunately, a friend of mine, um, Sir Isaac, was was murdered. And that kind of like really threw me through a loop to the point where I was depressed. I was really feeling like, what's the sense of doing this work if, you know, keep losing friends and blah, 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 blah. So I decided to do something about it, you know, and I went and got trained with the, the classes and now I fight. I fight with a, with a legal backing now to be able to help people through their processes. So I'm certified victim advocate. I'm a commissioner for the Martin Luther King Commission in New Jersey. So, you know, I just want I just want my dash to stand for something. You know, when, when God finally take me away from here, I want people, my children, my young people to know that I lived my life for something. You know, yeah. I lived my life for something and that you can as well. Like I want it to be purposeful, right? And everything that I'm doing now in life is I done made enough bad bad mistakes for other people, right? I just didn't get caught, right? Right. And those are the situations that like I, I fight that much harder to make things better because of some of the things that I was a part of. My eyes shouldn't have seen, I shouldn't have been a part of. God blessed me to to not pay for it in that way. So I, I live my life to give back. Yeah, yeah. You you learn from that as the years go on and uh build on that. And yeah, you know, absolutely. there's something to be said about being wise as as yeah. you're getting older. Yeah, and you can talk from a, a place of relevancy. Right. You can you can have these conversations with these young people and, and talk from, you know, not a space where oblivious, where we don't know nothing. No, I can talk to you about this. Right. I'm, I can be a credible messenger in a lot of ways. Right. But I'm smart enough to know that I don't know everything either. So I hire those people to be around me as well to be those credible messengers. Right. So now the, the key to me with these young people is being relative, re relevant. Right, it's being relevant and being able to have a conversation with them, and you can't really have a conversation with them if they're not feeling safe. Right, they don't trust you if they don't feel safe. So, creating yeah. a safe space for them to be comfortable to talk to you, and while they're talking to you, you can assess some things from the experience that you've had and be able to help them in that process. It doesn't always work, but for the most part, it does. Yeah, you know? that's yeah. It's never nothing's gonna be a hundred percent. It's just like, right. and you can't let that get you down. You always, and then it's so easy to say, "Hey, keep your eyes on the prize, get back up on the horse." Blah blah blah. Yeah, that's tough, but yeah. you know, you got to find that that inner strength, and that that's how that uh, you know, to to carry on and and to really well, believe absolutely. in your mission. Absolutely, it's 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 really hard right now. Last week, I I lost a um um a sixteen year old to um he was he was murdered. And, you know, and, and he grew up here in the hub and that this shit's hard. It's hard. It's hard, man, because you can't save everybody, man. And, and, you know, yeah, it, it's like in my 16 years of doing this, I lost now him would make seven kids, you know, like, so I'm, I'm happy that it's not way more, but everyone counts, right? Yeah. Each one of them hurt, you know, and it's just right. like, damn, I wish I could have saved them. I wish I could have saved them. And and I'm realizing that I'm not Superman, that all I could do is put ourselves in a position to give them a space, a, a space that they safe in, provide them with programming, provide them with mentorship. You know, we, we change the game a little bit. We call it interest-based mentoring. So we figure out the things that they like and use that as a way to mentor them through. Um, and, you know, can't save everybody. Yeah. Just got to keep the faith, no matter what that is. Um, that's we, you know, you cl clutch onto that and you just hope that's, you know, yeah, one is too many who get murdered or they murdered somebody. It's just uh, absolutely it's a lot. It's terrible, and especially these days. I don't know if it's kind of post COVID um, that things are happening, especially like where I'm at here. It's just, uh, it's just heartbreaking every time you turn around. Um, you know, somebody's getting murdered or somebody murdered somebody. And uh, gosh, you know, even, you know, police officers too. I mean, yeah. in the line of fire. It's real. 
It's real. Oh, it's, 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 it's so real. When you think about COVID, man, I, I sit back and I think like, you know, just 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 ride with me for a second. If if yeah. you don't understand trauma, you don't identify with it, um, so you're not accepting it as such, right? And then you're now locked in with yeah. with the abuser, right? And can't yeah. escape. So that that's exacerbated, right? To a whole nother level. And too many, too many situations have been like that, right? Where now I can't even get away. So I gotta deal with it. So that's more uh stuff that's going in. And then when it's finally released, like people react in, in so many different ways and don't know how to deal with it. So I'm always about training. I'm always about, you know, getting some understanding for these young people and, and, and their families because you can't blame somebody for what they don't know, right? That's another part is about teaching the families, teaching the um, parenting skills, right? Um, because they, we're growing up and, and I keep going back to my own situation, but growing up in a household where, you know, the abuse is happening, Mm. right abuse is happening and you don't know how to deal with that right and um mm. my mom was abused right she, she, what you knew she, from right and 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 unfortunately every time i say this i i, I hesitate because i never want my mom to feel like you know i'm blaming her right yeah but i think she taught me and my brothers to accept yeah. less than right because yeah. she kept going, she kept staying with this guy that would beat on her, right? And it was like, like, what are you doing? Like, mom, yeah. like, you know, um, and, and what what I've noticed is that me and my brothers grew up accepting women in our lives that, you know, didn't totally have our best interests. And the pattern was accepting right. it because that's love. No, that's not love, right? Mm -hmm. But when we were taught love. that, right? Yeah. It, but that same teacher, my mom taught us all these other things. Like we teach people how to treat us by the things that we accept, right? Mm -hmm. But here it is that you are allowing this guy to do this, and we're seeing it, and we're we're you know we're part of that residue. Yeah, right. Yeah. That trauma happened in our lives too. It didn't just happen to you; it happened to us too. You know, so um, so I, I want to teach more about that and teach these parents to to understand their worth right yeah, yeah. because their children are watching yeah they are their they absorb are, it. they absorbing it all and understanding yeah. more than you think right oh, so yeah. we have to be careful about that right so all of those things man i i just want the hub to be a place where we can get those 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 trainings and learning how to care for ourselves enough that it becomes contagious and infectious to other people, right? That you are somebody, that you are great, that you can be something. Like, you know, because too many times we're taught that we're not, that we can't. And, you know, practice makes perfect even when it's wrong. You know, yeah. you get so good at doing something wrong that you start believing that is right. And that's not good. You yeah, know? that's that's a tough cycle to break. And uh, yeah, it's about having that confidence, the self-esteem. It's like, you know, you're better than that. But it's it's hard when you have been so programmed for so right. long. Right. To not even think that you're better than that. Right. Yeah. That this is just life. Right. This is right. what I'm supposed to do. No, you're not. Right. And that's why, again, it's so important to take these young people outside of their norm. Right. Show them a, a different side of life. Um, let them experience life so then you can you can actually make a decision from that then right yeah. like oh wow i've seen this i'm dealing with this but i want that yeah but what is that if you never see it right 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 That's so, what it does so, yeah so it, i mean it's hard but somebody's got to do it Yes. Okay. And it's good. And you're finding, you know, you're leave, you're going to leave the world a better place than when you found it. And if you've done that, you've, you've done your mission, you've done your, you know, it's, it's good to be remembered for all the great things and, you know, having that legacy. Right. right. I'm, I'm, I'm so hell bent on just making sure that we help us become better. Simple. Yep. You know, simple. Like, you know, if I, if I change one child, 
and I've done our job and I know we've touched thousands and thousands and thousands of kids that have come through our program, their parents that have come through the program or have, have participated in any program services or events that we've done over the 17 years because I've always done everything that we've done out of love. It's always been love first. I've never let money lead me. So it's always been genuine. And now because of that, I'm very intentional about what I do. I'm very intentional about who I hire, you know, just so that we create the experiences that people walk away changed. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really what matters. It does. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good stuff. So where can we find you on the web? Everything is that hub that hub life on all social media platforms. T H T H U B B L I F E. I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that hub life. Yes. Cool. Cool. Well, best wishes to you. Uh, it's been really wonderful hearing about your organization, your music. Uh, 23 is going to be a really good year. Sounds like. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm so looking forward to it, man. So looking forward to it. Yeah. Especially a movie with Bruce Willis. Hopefully that gets in the theaters and stays yes. there for a while. And uh, it, the soundtrack does well. Let's let's yes. hope for all that. Yes, thank you so much, man. Thank you for the platform and for you, you know, having a place, a platform for for us to be able to showcase what it is that we do and how we do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Best wishes. Best wishes to you as well.